Yeah, right. It's just going live right now. I'm going to have images of the of the sculptures also, but we'll talk in front of, okay. in front of them over there. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Robert Langdon, and you are here in um, Emerge Gallery in Saugerties, New York. And I am here to present uh, the new show that just opened yesterday. It's called Exit 20, uh, work by Saugerties artists. And those uh, not familiar with the Exit 20 reference, that's the Saugerties exit on um, the three-way, the New York three-way. And being a Jersey boy, I'm very familiar with uh, exits and um, identifying with different exits. Uh, so we've got 44 different artists in the show. Some of them are going to be joining us uh, here today to talk about their work. Um, and I'm going to be um, ed, uh, I'm going to be introducing each of the pieces. And for those artists that um, can't join us, um, I will um, be presenting their work on their behalf. Uh, so, Okay, let's uh, start it off. I'm going to give you just a quick little uh, visual of, of the gallery. We've got some guests in here also having some uh, look around, a couple artists that are going to present the work. So I'm going to go uh, right over to right in the front, uh, show you a little bit about, uh, show you a little bit of Solverties. Uh, we have a great exhibition uh, of some uh, drawings in the window of some uh, of the Buildings and Socrates by Vi Norlander, who will be here at some point to talk about her work. Um, and then there's a couple really wonderful sculptures here by Josephine uh, Bentevegna, who um, we're going to meet in a moment, and uh, she will talk about her sculptures. Okay, uh, so this is uh, this is the show. I'm just going to do a quick little uh, visual so you can get a get an idea of. <laughs> what's going on, how it's hung. Uh, all of the work is available online as well. Uh, you can spend a time with each individual piece. Uh, so I'm going to mute people. There we go. Okay. Um, and we're going to go over each of, each of the pieces in the show, uh, talk a little bit about them, have a closer look at each of the, of the pieces, and go from there. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to bring on uh, Josephine, uh, who I had just mentioned, and let me bring up some of her. Oh, you know, actually, before I do that, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about Socrates. I'm sorry, Jeffrey, just give me <laughs> a second. Uh, want to just talk a little bit about Socrates. Uh, it's a real, real creative town right here in the Hudson Valley. Um, we have a lot of artists um, in Socrates. Um, and, uh, more are coming up. Uh, this is a, uh, this just gives you a little, uh, sampling of, uh, the artists that we do have in Socrates. But if you want to, uh, get a larger sampling, um, please go to the Socrates Artist Studio Tour, which, um, uh, I'm a little partial, but it's the best one in the area. There's, there's, uh, it, it is, right, Judith? Yeah, it is. Uh, there's, there's a number of them, um, in, in, uh, the Hudson Valley. Uh, this this studio tour has been going on for um, probably 25 years now, I think. Uh, Barbara Bravo does a really fantastic job in organizing it. There's usually about uh, 40 plus artists that open up their home studios uh, to the public. And it's usually, I think maybe the second or third weekend in August. Um, so uh, if you're, you know, if you're planning on do it, doing it, uh, book the whole weekend to do it because it's it's spread out a little bit, um, but it's so so worth it to get to see each of the individual artists. Uh, so go ahead and have a visit at the uh, Sargates Artist Studio Tour uh, website. It's sargatesarttour.org. All right. We also have in town Shout Out Socrates, which is a wonderful uh, group that is headed uh, by Suzanne Bennett. Um, it basically pulls together um, a number of different, um, uh, uh, per yes, performers, visual performers. There's literary events. Uh, there's uh, some play workshops. 
Um, there are some film screenings. They do a little bit of everything, but everything that they do, oh, there's some exhibitions. Um, I've, I've done a few exhibitions with Shout Out Socrates. Uh, have, uh, we're bringing back a reading series uh, this, uh, this year to the uh, Catskill Mountain Moonshine Company, which I'm very excited about. Um, so we're going to be doing quite a bit of, 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 of uh, events there. Uh, but please have a have a, a look at shoutoutsocrates.org. They're a wonderful nonprofit profit organization to uh, support as well. Um, and have a look at their schedule of, of events. Socrates is a happening town. It is, yes. And then finally, um, the, uh, the town is on to us and has now uh, formed a Socrates Arts Commission. It's, uh, it's um, town sanctioned, I believe. Uh, it's approved by the town. Uh, there is an, an, uh, a, a, a board for the, uh, the Socrates Arts Commission that pulls all of the different artists together, um, promotes all of the different activities that are going on um, in, in Socrates. Uh, they also have a database for all artists, both visual, literary, um, film uh, uh, producers, uh, runs a gamut. So uh, yeah, please have a look at them as well. All right, so let's bring Josephine on. Can I come to you? Um, I can come to you. Um, uh, we're, we're, yeah, we're right, be, we're right behind um, the sculpture. So I just wanted to point out real quick before we bring her on again, uh, this is the uh, where you can see the exhibit. It's the uh, artsy page, artsy.net, and then it's Emerge Gallery NY. There you'll find the current exhibition, um, and then you'll see some online exclusives as well. Okay, great. So um, this is the first piece. Um, so this is Josephine. Hi. Uh, Josephine, you know, I will, I, I just introduced you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tell us a little bit about, um, about your sculptures. You've got two pieces that are in a window. The uh, first piece is the cow. Yeah. And then the second piece, um, is the cat, which yeah. I just love. Um, well, hi, I'm Josephine Bentivenia and, uh, I'm grateful to be in the show, Robert. Thank you. And, uh, I'm, I'm a new transplant to Socrates. I've only been here about a year and a half, but. I'm originally from Brooklyn, and uh, I've only been working in ceramics for about four or five years, um, and I started that in Brooklyn, but when I came here, you know, after I, you know, unpacked all my stuff and sat for a while, I didn't really know what to make, you know, so I kind of just uh, said no judgment, and I just started making these animals, and I have made animal theme sculptures before but these are a little different you know than what I've made before and uh you know I've worked with the figure as well but I find that working with the animal subject is uh it helps me uh relate to what I want to relate and and my work is really about uh relating emotional human emotions um uh, psychology and and mm -hmm. spirituality and uh, I think, you know, the animal form is well, easier for me to do that. Well, the spat, the spirituality, I mean, a cow is a really, yeah. really gorgeous. Yeah. Um, uh, That's definitely yeah. like a spiritual thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. Well, welcome to Socrates. We hope to, to see a lot more of you. Um, and one of the other things I wanted to mention about Socrates, too, is like a lot of other towns during the summer, um, they do put out uh, different sculptures around uh, around the village yeah. and invite artists to uh, to create them. Uh, so this year they're going to be doing their back to horses again. So um, perfect for you. So hopefully uh, maybe we'll see a, a horse sure. sculpture from you sure. on the streets this year. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Thanks. All right, thanks, Josephine. All right. Um, did want to mention that the gallery is open, so there are people that are going to be coming yeah. in. Um, and everyone's welcome here. All right. Um, our next piece is by uh, Shelly David. Uh, Shelly is an artist. Uh, well, actually, all of the artists are, are from Socrates. Um, so this piece is called uh, Sunflower. Um, and let me see what Shelly has to say about this. Um, it is a pastel, uh, pastel work. Um, it's 16 by 14. It was created in 2020. Um, I'm starting a garden on empty land with my first sunflowers. They were planted so I could draw, looking through my window into the garden, observing and painting all their moons. Uh, it's a really 
uh, fun and you know really uh, um, joyful piece. I mean, it it, it brings a lot of light uh, to uh, to the gallery, which I really like. Okay, uh, now we have uh, not Shelley David, but Shelley Davis. Uh, two completely different Shelleys with very similar names. Uh, Shelley Davis lives in the hamlet of Malden, and Shelley's been going uh, creating. Uh, a whole series of antique signs uh, recently. This is one of them. This is uh, called the Clam Broth House. Um, it's acrylic. It's 16 by 20 and it was created this year. Uh, Shelley says memories of turbulent ocean waves, moody skies, the smell of surf and sand, and of course, fresh clams led to this painting. Filled with nostalgia, I hope that the painting can trigger memories of those Splendid days at the shore. Um, actually, uh, sorry to contradict you, Shelley, but the clam broth house was in um, Hoboken, so it brings back memories of Hoboken. Um, unless there was one down the shore, I mean, I I, I wouldn't doubt um, if there was one down there. There were there were certainly um, some really wonderful seafood restaurants down at the Jersey Shore. Uh, so this is um, Clam Broth House by Shelley Davis. Uh, next, we have uh, Guys. This is a old sign, which I, I leads me to believe it's a a um, a, um, a uh, uh, automotive sign. Um, so, continuing my love affair with vintage buildings and signs, I am fascinated by the sculptural raw talents of nature. How beautiful the grains, fading, chipping are, breathing new life into what some would tear down and discard. I feel that I am preserving a thing of beauty gifted to us by nature to be cherished always, to create from the soul, to have fun, to express, to share what I create with others is the force that drives me. Anything that can exist in life can be recreated with beauty and wonder. As an artist, I make constant decisions that bring life's beauty and wonder to a visual conclusion. Uh, so that is uh, Shelley Davis. Shelley's got some really wonderful work uh, in the design series. Uh, you can have a look on Artsy for um, some more of Shelley's uh, Shelley's work, um, including some work from her sign series. Uh, next, I'm really pleased to have two pieces by uh, Margaret Still. Uh, I, Margaret, I mean, it's it 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 always has this sort of hopper uh, kind of flavor uh, to me with Margaret's work. Uh, but this is a really fun piece. This is uh, called Clothes, Danny Danny's. Denny Owens Strip Club, Memphis, Tennessee, number two. Um, the second piece by Margaret. This one I like a lot too. Um, is called um, Flood with Signage. And both of these are um, oil on acrylic. <laughs> Next, we have uh, two pieces by Josefa Petelius. Uh, this one I like a lot. This is called uh, Child Looks at the Dance, I believe. Uh, let me just double check that. Josefa is a really wonderful artist in, uh, up in uh, Berkeley Heights in Socrates. Um, she's got a really fantastic studio. If you do go to the uh, Socrates Artist Studio Tour, um, definitely check out uh, Josepha's uh, studio. This is called Child Looks at the Dance of Life. It's 16 by 24, 24 and it was created in 2022. Uh, this second piece um, is called uh, DNA. This is also acrylic and um, it's fluid acrylic with a watercolor pencil and it's 30 by 20 created last year. And I believe, I mean, Josepha is, oh, Josepha is a um, a new grandmother, so I believe that this is um, Josepha's um, uh, husband and grandchild. Um, did I see Barbara Barbara Levy here? Let me see. Hold on. Maybe not. I thought I did. Okay. Um, well, this is a a, a, a piece by Barbara T Tepper Levy. Uh, this is called uh, Bouquet. It is a collage piece. Um, and the dimensions are 24 by 18. This is from 2018. 
Uh, Barbara's second piece is called Turquoise Quar uh, uh, Turquoise Quarry. This is mixed media on canvas, and this is 12 by 12. Also, this is a brand new piece. Um, and I was really pleased to see, uh, see both of these from Barbara. Uh, uh, Ulf Lovin, I've got two, um, two large works from Ulf. Um, Ulf is um, a really wonderful Scandinavian artist. Uh, this piece is called Violins and uh, Flowers. It's uh, part of a series that Ulf has been working on um, for the last couple of years. Uh, it's oil on canvas. This is 40 by 44. It's, as I said, part of a series of still lives done years ago and reworked recently. Uh, the violin is a constant theme as he attempts to play Bach on violin and viola. Um, he also has a, uh, a really be beautiful series where he deconstructs uh, 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 the violin and different musical instruments. Um, and then the second piece uh, is called um, Scandinavian Journey. Oops. Here. Sorry about that. The second piece is called uh, Scandinavian Journey. Uh, this was done in 2020. It's part of an abst abstract series that he's been working with for the last couple of years. And actually, you can see it right behind me. Um, I did want to go back for a moment um, and show you uh, Faye Woods. I skipped over the Faye Woods sculpture, which um, I'm really sorry about. Uh, Faye Wood's a wonderful uh, sculptor, and uh, well, she does she does lots of um, of different uh, different work. Works with a lot of different mediums. Uh, this is an untitled piece. I had a whole series um, exhibited in the window a couple months ago by Faye. She recently uh, started working with. Um, uh, she found a whole box of colored wire that she's that she's had for twenty something years or so, and she started crocheting it. Um, so what you see here, the, uh, the body itself is made out of chicken wire and then all of the covering is, um, is all hand crocheted, uh, colored wire, um, that's fit affixed to it. Or that's, there's some colored wire here and then it looks like there's copper here, uh, but it is all, all crocheted. Uh, so this is, uh, this is Faye Wood's piece in the show. Um, uh, you can have a look, for, uh, on the RC site for, uh, some of the other works um a phase from that series okay. uh gray uh gray ira morris is next this is called david bowie and the zombies uh right up my alley here we go um i think that's what it's called right yeah david bowie and the zombies uh, this is based on a uh, short story that um, that Gray wrote. Uh, there is a link to a PDF um, on the artsy site, so um, you know, have a look uh, and uh, enjoy the story. It's a good one, um, and it goes along with the with the artwork. Elizabeth, here we are. Great, I get to take a break, and you get to take a break from uh, from me. Uh, Elizabeth, I'm going to bring you up. I'm, uh, really pleased that you're here um, and that, um, you know, we've got two pieces from you. Um, I think Thank you me. are, no, you're not muted. Great. Uh, yes, I am here somewhere. Excellent. I see you. Yep. Um, uh, so we have, uh, Elizabeth, I got two, I have two pieces uh, by you. Uh, this is the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the title on this. Muslim Women um, Praying to the Dawn, I think it is. That's right. And then the second one is Iraqi women waiting to vote. Uh, you want to talk about both or any preference? On um, which well, yes, a few years ago, I was uh, when I used to read the New York Times in print, um, I would cut out a lot of, of pieces that um, moved me, um, usually political ones about, you know, uh, well, here, Iraqi women trying to vote. And I had taken a few courses at RNF studios in encaustics. Um, so I, um, I, I trans, I um, use encaustic over over photographs. Uh, more recently, I've been trying to do paint, encaustic painting, but these are an earlier attempt with just photographs. The the um, Muslim women praying to the dawn, I think, is based on a photograph by 
Henri-Cartier Bresson and the Iraqi women waiting to vote is um, a photograph from the New York Times. So I, I just uh, had, had fun with, with those images. Tell, Elizabeth, tell me a little bit about photo transfer. Oh, if, well. If you don't, if you aren't familiar with it. Yes. Well, um, it's been a few years since I was at RNF Studios, but um, basically you um, one um, th through heat transfer, um, you um, uh, heat the heat the plate and um, put the image um, faced rub a spoon over it. And well, there are various methods. I forget, frankly, I forget which uh, transfer method this is, but it, it really it transfers the images through through heat. And then with the um, encaustic, of course, is a, is a wax-based medium. And so that sort of fixes it on the panel. So is, is it sort of a vellum that the ink is printed on and then put on the, yeah. on the encaustic, which, which adheres to it? Um, no, it's more like um, a panel. I think they're just called encaustic boards, and there it's a um, a panel that that will accept the um, the the image, the photo image, right? And and um, and then uh, through heat, well, I have a um, a heat panel which I um, put the wax over, and the, um. I haven't really done these for a couple of years. As I say, I'm doing mostly um, painting directly on on the on panels, and yeah. then and then using the wax. So this is kind of a, a different well, technique. The reason why I ask is, I mean, um, encaustics always intrigued me. So um, you know, one of these days, um, I'm going to make it over to R and F and take a couple classes and really. Uh, you know, play. Um, oh, do yeah, I, I did yeah, some yeah. classes with somebody called Cynthia Winnicka, who was very helpful to me. Oh, yeah, sure. She's a wonderful artist too. Yeah, she is. She is. I don't think she teaches there anymore, but there are a number of, of really good artists there, and, and they have these mini courses. You know, you can take for a day or half a day actually, and teaches one the basics, and one can sort of have fun with it. Fantastic. Well, thank you for putting that back in my head because it's something I've been wanting to do. So I think that's going to be on my to-do list this year. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Um, um, there's some other pieces of Elizabeth too, including some of her encaustic work that are on artsy that's from some of the previous shows. Uh, so have a look. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, I have a little peanut gallery. <laughs> um, Okay. Um, I don't usually participate in any of these, uh, you know, events, um, the poetry one I do, but I was recently cleaning out um, my mother's uh, attic and I found a photograph of mine. It's not online, but uh, that I had done um, probably 10 years ago or so, a uh, little nudie. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool. I always thought it was a, you know, I thought it was a really beautiful photograph. So um uh, you know, I live in Socrates, and um, why not? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you won't see much of my stuff. Uh, although uh, my favorite show is coming up, Art and Words, um, so you will see some of my poetry uh, uh, coming up for that. It's art inspired by poetry, poetry inspired by art. Okay, great. Um, oh, let me get back up again. Uh, I'm just going to take you over to William's piece. Uh, this is William Greenwood. Uh, this is really, really gorgeous piece. It's called Spectre. Spectre, right? Yes, it's Spectre. It's bronze, silver, and um, and wood. Crystal. Oh yes, and the crystal ball. Yeah, I mean, can you see the crystal ball that um, that lays really nicely on the hands? And I really like the way it's hung. I thought it was a really nice juxtaposition between um, William's um, nude and my nude, and then the uh, Elizabeth's two. Um, uh, in classic pieces of the of the um, the Iraqi women, Muslim women. Uh, that is always one of my fun. Uh, you know, I always get a kick out of discovering those kind of um, you know connections when I'm hanging uh, the art. All right. Oh, Nancy, you're up. All right, I'm going to bring on Nancy Deflon. 
uh, who I am happy to say both of her pieces sold on um, during the opening. So congratulations, Nancy. Uh, let me bring up your work. Where are we? Okay. So that one, so Williams. Okay, uh, this is the uh, this is Nancy's first piece. Um, okay, let me come over here so we can get you by your your photograph. Uh, here, you want to go right over here? Sure. Uh, so Nancy's got two photographs here. This the the first one is called Rainy Day in Socrates, um, and um, I had no doubt that people would really connect with this um, since it is is literally right around the corner. Um, so yeah, it did sell and um, there are multiple copies available. So um, if you too are interested in, in, in a copy, uh, it's available. Um, so tell us about, about both pieces uh, or let's start with the, the Rainy Day and Socrates. Yeah, I love taking street scenes like this and Socrates is especially good for it because I like the way Socrates, the shops have these street signs that kind of, uh, not street, well, you know, signs that stick out from the building. Uh, it just makes it nicer for the pictures somehow than if, they aren't, you know, me, you know, something like like this and these kinds of signs here. I like that. And of course, Socrates is very colorful too. So, it's yeah. good for, and I happen to, I, I go out on a rainy day. I just think that the reflections and the texture that you get from um, the a rainy sidewalk surface, and of course you have that blue stone. Here well, the blue Socrates. stone makes it great. I mean, look at the reflection of the buildings above exactly. it, right on the sidewalk. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. That, that really makes it um, a winner. Yeah. Um, now you you did you use um, some kind of processing on on this to get like, a painterly quality? Uh, uh, Supposed processing just to make and, and it didn't take very much because the picture itself with the colors and the reflection was very good. So I forget exactly what I used. Some kind of a plugin from Topaz probably, mm -hmm. but it just enhanced everything ever yeah. so slightly. Yeah. Did, you, know, you know, I'm not into making things looking phony. I just well, that's my thing too. You know, I think sometimes, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, the photographs, people can over-process them. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, there's there's a fine balance. Um, and I think you've, you've got and If that. I want to make something look like Turner painted it, then I'll do that. But, you know, sure. <laughs> and you know, I've done that too. Um, all right. Uh, and then the second piece. All right, I, want, I want to show. Queen of the Catterskill. Right. I want to show you this. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, um, this is a well-known painting by uh, Asher Duran called Kindred Spirits. And so work like this that I've done um, has been inspired by that because you have a, it's actually a composite of a, your typical Pat Skill scene. And then you have the two figures, you have um, Durand himself and you have Thomas Cole. It was painted in memory of Thomas mm -hmm. Cole who had died just shortly. Be Yesterday was the anniversary of his death in fact. Oh really? Yeah, now that I think of it, yeah. And so I started just making, uh, I, I go up and take pictures at, at, at this particular point, which is where um, it, it goes down, uh, this is all down to uh, Catterskill Clove. And you get these rocks here, which are very often just covered with water, you know, depending on how much rain there's been at any given time. I go at different times of year. So I have a collection of pictures of this scene, not exactly, but you know, different vantage points, but that scene, and I think, there was one that I had, and it it had Thomas Cole, and it had yes. Rip Van Winkle in it. And remember, I think you saw, ledge, you yeah. saw that uh -huh. one. Yeah, I have some other crazy ones in mind, but I, you know, people think cat skills, they think cats. And so I decided to do some with cats. And this is the cat. <clears throat> I don't own this cat, but I spend a lot of time cat sitting yes. this cat. And so I get a chance to take some photos of her. I got and her sister, which uh, who, who died a while ago, unfortunately, but I have some pictures of her. Uh you don't own cats. Cats own you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm very. I apologize to the cats of the world for implying that we own cats. You know, we are their domestic servants. Yes, exactly. <laughs> From ancient Egypt. Um, well, wonderful. Congratulations on both sales. I think. The, I think you you caught on to something here with um, you know different figures on the cat skill legends. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Nancy. Always always a pleasure. All right. Thanks for hanging in, everybody. Um, I know it's Super Bowl day. <laughs> uh, my personal, you know, I mean, I'll watch Super Bowl. I shouldn't say I don't watch it. I do like it. 
Um, all right, next, uh, we have uh, Debbie Auer Breithaupt. Uh, this piece is called, uh, hold on one sec, I'm sorry. Guiding the Spirits Home. It's acrylic, it's 36 by 24 from 2022. It's inspired by the Will of the Wisp. In the folklore and legends, the Will of the Wisps are ghostly lights attributed to spirits fairies and elementals modern science attributes them or attributes them to bioluminescence in the folklore they lead someone astray or towards a goal and they frequent the swamps and marshes they're found in many countries legends including norway and thailand and in the lore of many states including texas where they are called marf lights and in missouri where they're called spook lights this painting interprets the lights as spirits and the and the angel it's guiding them up and home to heaven. The painting is on stretch canvas. It's 36 by 24. Okay. That's Debbie. Um, next is Rich Levy. Um, Rich is uh, Rich is a, uh, I think he's a neuro uh, neurosurgeon. Uh, he's a brain surgeon, Rick. He's, I know he's a doctor, uh, Rich. Um, uh, really nice guy, and he's um, he's been taking classes at the Woodstock School of Art, um, uh, and he's been getting better and better. And I really, really like this a lot. It's called uh, Nora. Um, it is let's see, thirty-one by thirty-eight. It's a charcoal drawing with pastels, and it's gesso uh, prepared wrapping paper. So that's Nora, another nude. I've been thinking about doing a nude show. Not filthy nude, but yes. classy nude. <laughs> you know, maybe a little filthy nude too. Uh, this is a, a wonderful mixed media textile piece. This is by um, uh, uh, Karen Pure uh, Wright. Kathy Pure Wright, I'm sorry. It's called Move, Moon Over Malden. It's... Uh, 10 and a half by 14, and it is brand new from this year. Uh, then this is a uh, piece by her husband, John Wright. It is Virginia Beach. Here we go. Uh, this is watercolor, and it is 20 by 26. Um, this is really cool. I, I really connected with this piece. Um, it's a photograph by John T. Smith, uh, who's new to the area. Um, and it is, um, it's called Lights. Um, it is a uh, reflection. Um, well, actually, you know, let me just read what John has to say about it. Uh, because it was sort of interesting how he captured this. Uh, this photo was taken from the inside of a ferry terminal at uh in France where the camera pointed at the sky it's a mostly self he's a mostly self-taught photographer for over five decades has used the medium as a platform for artistic exploration um so this was um basically a reflection um of the lights and the skies um I've always been really drawn um in my own photography as well to um to reflections and odd um you know um uh groupings like this I mean it almost makes it look like UFOs so that's Lights by John T. Smith. Uh, this is called Recollection by Andrea Giaraputo. It's a, it's a small little piece, um, but I think it's, it's really charming and it is very effective. Wild Warning, this is by uh, Hilary Lander. Uh, Hilary, I've been really glad to see that she's been doing um, uh, a lot more um, abstract art lately. I think she has something here about it. Let me just double check. Uh, and this, uh, this it is acrylic, and it's 2022. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. She doesn't have that. Sometimes abstract doesn't need an explanation. Just feel it. <laughs> uh, now this is really cool. Uh, I had the pleasure of um, of visiting um, Stephen Whistler, and um, and his his lovely wife um, Sabine uh, Reckwell the other day they're uh, new to the area and um John's got so he's got some really cool work uh Sabina also has does some really really wonderful installations um with uh with strings and cords really really beautiful work 
Um, so this is this is one of John's pieces. Um, I'm sorry, Steven's pieces. Um, it is called Heart and Stomach. Um, it, I'm going to bring you over to it. Uh, but this is charred wood with uh, silver leaf. Uh, John actually, he makes the, uh, I keep saying John. Stephen keeps making the, um, I mean, he, I keep, I keep saying John. Uh, Stephen makes the, uh, the boxes himself. Uh, they close up into like a suitcase and they're, they're hella cool, man. <laughs> really cool. Uh, has a whole series there. I had two of them in the virtual show. Uh, Something wicked this way comes. Uh, two skulls, and then the other one was, uh, I believe, it was um, heart and lungs. Um, these I'm going to show you these on um, in person because uh, these are are really wonderful. Also, these are Sabines. Um, they are untitled and they're um, embroidery threads that on a uh, heavy. Uh, you know, uh, paper ma uh, material. Uh, but depending on how you look at them, um, because they are metallic, they sort of, uh, you know, change um, change the look, which when you look at a lot of her installations too, um, you can walk around them and they look completely different from each, uh, each direction. Uh, so it's really wonderful to, I'm really glad that they're in town here and it was wonderful to see them last night at the opening. And thank you for everyone who came to the opening last night. Uh, it was really, really well attended. We had a great time. Uh, another new artist to the area, Jay Ballesteros. This is called uh, Winter at Thorn Preserve. Um, and this is a, uh, a photograph. I don't think it's processed at all. I'm not too sure. Heather Caulfield. Uh, this is really a really charming piece. I like this a lot. Um, you can't see on the bottom, but I'm going to bring it to you and show you um, the little drips sort of act as feet. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, yeah, Heather's new to the area. She um, is new to the staff of the uh, Woodstock School of Art. So welcome to the area, Heather. And this is, uh, the title of this is um, Spearmint Vase with Tangelo Petals. Oh, great. This is a very cool piece by um, Corey Bisignano, I think. Did I, am I pronouncing it right? Bisignano, yes. Um, this is a ethically sourced um, white-tailed deer head. Um, it, uh, from what I understand, it's taken years to sort of do its natural composition. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's it's uh it's pretty wild. Um, so that's Cody's. Um, Arabella, I see you right here. And actually, I'm right by your piece. Is it okay? I'm gonna do it from here. Um and I'm glad you're here to joining us. Hold on. You're on mute though. Hold on. You're on you gotta take yourself off mute, uh Arabella. <laughs> There should be a little uh, microphone on the bottom, bottom lower left in Zoom. It looks like a little microphone, it says mute. Okay, um, look for it, it's there. I'm gonna move on and then we'll come back to you. All right, uh, let me move on to, and Arabella, when you get it, just interrupt me. Uh, this is uh, Dan McCarthy. This is called uh, Colossus, a beautiful black and white photograph. Um, it is digital and it. Um... Oh, I think I got it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Um, you, you got it. I can hear you. Oh, let, good. Me just, let me just finish this up real quick and then I'll bring you right sure. back. On. Very good. All right. Uh, and this was in New Mexico. Okay, great. All right, Arabella, uh, let me bring you back up. I've lost the picture, but it, as long as you can hear me. Hold on. Now I'm gonna, I can hear you. Okay. 
I've lost right, my great. picture. I'm let me spotlight you. I've lost the picture, but that's all right. <laughs> okay. All right, great. So we got you side by side. So go ahead and tell us about uh, about this piece, Arabella. It's well, I I okay. love this. I love this tree. It's just down from where I live at the mill. And I love the the way it's clinging on and the roots are all exposed and so gnarled. And this particular day was one of the days that we got a dusting of snow, the mm -hmm. only snow we've we've gotten this year. And I feel as if this tree is a metaphor for for us clinging on to the planet that we're in the process of destroying. Oh, yeah. I think this tree is clinging on more strongly than we are. And mm -hmm. uh, so it became even more poignant when I thought about it in, in that way. But you, you, there is, you do have a follow-up to it. Um, in uh, with another photograph, the uh, the tree stump with the the new uh, new yes. growth. Yes, yes. So that. So you've got the old, and you've got the new. So maybe there's hope. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming, Arabella. I'm glad it all Thank worked you. out. I miss you. Miss you here at the gallery. Thank you. Yes, and feel better next, next time. Thank you. Okay, absolutely. All right. Uh, next, we are going to, who's, who's up next? I'm sorry, Ben. <laughs> did, did you want to go next? I can bring you up next. That's not a bit. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bring Ann up. Um, All right, great, Ann. Come on, let's go by your piece. I got them, uh, I have them pulled up on the screen here too, so folks can. Uh... Hey everybody. Sure. Yep. Saturday afternoon, or Sunday, fo football. Jeez, right. All right, so these two are my pieces. Um, it's Ann Lee's, by the way. Hi. Uh, these two are mine. Um, they're both done on, actually on cardboard, and um, I use a metallic leaf to create the light areas. Um, this was done after uh, a beach in Costa Rica. So this is really cardboard with um, charcoal and then, you know, a, a, it's a mixed media, same mm -hmm. with this. So I work after nature and a lot of times I work plein air. So they're actually, I'm out there and making them. And a lot of times I, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So they, a lot of landscapes come out of my head but they're informed by the real thing. Great. So, and you're new to the area as well. I'm fairly new. new yeah, yeah. yeah, I've um, been in Philadelphia for a number of years. I uh, lived uh, in Europe and in Vermont. So I've been around, but this place is really special. So I'm really happy to be here. And yeah, I'm really happy to have you. Having my work in your gallery, Robert. Absolutely. And if you want to see more of Anne's work, she's right next door also, a nice collection of her work. And you can see her yeah. in action. Yeah, I have uh, a I have a booth, um, a, a beautiful space in the window um, at the Newberry Building on Main Street in Saugerties. So, so I'm doing a changing show. It's like my own little mini gallery. So, um, my big um, plan for spring is to do an all waterfall show because I'm fascinated by waterfalls, and up here they're unbelievable. Yeah, I mean everywhere, everywhere they're beautiful, but but up here it's very very special. So come and visit and come and see me. I. I Tend to be there on the weekends. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Actually, she's headed it's right back. She's headed there now. Show here. Come and see it in person. There's so yeah. many pieces. I'm like, I want you. <laughs> They're available. Well, not all of them. Uh, yeah, Anne's on her way back over there. So um, if you want to go check her out, go for it. Wait till this is done, though. <laughs> all right. Um, so back to... Um, Oh, Alyssa Almanzo. This is a uh, this is a really interesting piece. I like this piece a lot too. It is the man who thought his son. Hold on, portrait of a man who mistook an olive for his son. 
Um, and this is um, this is acrylic. And um, let me see if if Alyssa. Oh, she says our work is a blend of portraiture um, and an abstracted nature. So thank you. Good to see you. Um, but her works always start with a human figure, and the surroundings always unfurl out of them. Uh, next, we have um, Jeff Helmuth. Oh, this is called this is coils. Uh, it is um, ink on Yupo. Um, people really do some pretty cool things with Yupo, and uh, Jeff is one of them. Jeff uh, is a um, I think he's a drafter for the. Um, City of New York Water Department. Uh, always pleased to have a piece of Jeff's here. And this one is pretty cool. Snake rope and, um, and a chain. Angela Gaffney Smith. Um, this is a Karen called um, Una. Una, I believe. I don't have my reading glasses on, so, uh, and my eyes are going. Where are we here? Unag. Um, this is made from um, chipped bluestone uh, right from her yard. She, um, her backyard is a, uh, is a bluestone quarry. Uh, Barbara Spaziri, this is the, uh, this is called the barn at um, Seaman and um, that is Seaman Park um, over here in Saugerties. Uh, this is watercolor. It is 11 by 14 and it's from 2022. Uh, happy to say this piece has sold. Dean, are you here? You want to, uh, oh, I see you. Great. I'm going to bring you up. I'm really, I'm really glad to have um, Dean Aronson here. Um, Dean, uh, again, I had met Dean through a uh, mutual friend, artist friend of ours. Um, and I was really, really pleased to have uh, a submission come in from Dean. Um, and um, here it is, it's untitled. Uh, so Dean, yeah, tell us about it. Welcome. Are you here? I think you're on mute, Dean. There you are, okay. Yeah, I can hear you. It's a little, little, uh, a little soft, but that's okay. So I started drawing individual plants in Charlotte's area about two years ago. Okay. They had evolved into the value of news and made it fully to the next stage. This is done in my backyard and I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, Dean, we're, we're having a, a real tough time hearing you. It's a little, it's a little muffled. I'm sorry, I've been on mute. I was on mute. Um, this is really wonderful, Dean. I, you know, I, I, I like I said, we've we've uh, had met each other a, a number of times, and I never really uh, talked to you about your art. So I was really pleased to uh, to see this. I would I would love to see some more too. Um, um, so yeah, great. Um, let's let's definitely talk. Um, and I'm, I I know I'll see you again real soon. All right, great. Thanks, Dean. Good to see you yesterday. Okay. Kate Masters. Um, I'm gonna uh, actually show you two of them. This is uh, Dingle Skies, and this is, or this is Dingle Skies, and then the other is Dingle Cliffs. Uh, they are both oil, and they were inspired by the um, Dingle um, County Dingle, I believe, in um, or the the uh, uh, the Dingle Islands in Ireland. Um, I forgot what county they're in. 
Uh, but um, they're sold. They both sold. Uh, I was hanging the show and uh, someone came in off the street and fell in love with them and had to have them. So um, um, be happy to, to um, add them to their collection. So congratulations, Kate. There's a lot more of Kate's work on, um, on Artsy as well. Uh, we saw Anne's, okay. Kellen, I'm glad you're here. All right, excellent. Thanks for being so patient. All right, this is uh, Kellen Gold. Welcome. Where are you? Hello. Uh, uh, so Kellen's Gold is called Pokeberry 3. Uh, so tell me a little bit about it. Sure, so um, I made this piece using pokeberry ink that I made myself from a pokeweed plant in my backyard here in Saugerties. Nice. Um, and it uses watercolor also. Um, there are nine in the series um, for now. Um, and um, it feels really connected for me to birds that are in the area. Like I've seen um, since making this painting, I've seen northern mockingbirds eating from the same plant that I took the ink from. Um, so it feels good to know that not only did it give me ink, it's also feeding the birds in the area. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. Maybe that's why I, I put them among birds <laughs> because they're um, it's right among birds. And I, I saw the, well, maybe it was the shape too, but I just, I saw the connection between your piece and Marjorie's uh, piece over there, mm -hmm. uh, the rosate spoonbill. Um, uh, so what, tell what's, what, what's, um, which of the colors, like what's a natural color for a pokeberry? This, 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 this pink here, um, obviously when you dilute ink with water, the, yeah. the tone changes to so this lighter pink here, the very bold. So do you, do red. you mix it with various amounts of water to create different, yeah. different sort of, yeah. um, hues or shades? Oh, and great. as, as the brush, um, as the pigment fades off the brush, the color will change. Great, great. yeah, excellent. Well, thanks, thanks for being here. Yeah, I love thank uh, you for uh, having it in the show. Uh, absolutely, there yeah. was. Uh, I think the first one was in uh, yes. was in another show too. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, happy to have another one, and I love when people are re resourceful, especially with you know creating their own um, materials and from nature, um, like a black walnut ink. Thanks, Kellen. All right. Okay. Um, and Morris, this is called Leo. It's a collagraph. Um, Anne's been doing a lot of collagraphs lately, um, and I'm digging them. Uh, this one's a really cool one. It's a small one, eight by 10, I believe. Marjorie. Okay. Uh, Marjorie Maggot. Um, always a pleasure to have Marjorie's work here. I've got two pieces. This is a triptych um called um avian triptych and then the uh second piece is called rosate spoonbill uh so marjorie let me bring you up okay i'm here <laughs> excellent always a pleasure to see you thank you always Likewise. a pleasure to have your work here um as i say to you every time they make me smile uh, yeah <laughs> so yes uh so please tell tell us about about these guys okay well these guys um I was doing a class on a series and I was doing birds and I was doing different birds. And then I did the one, oh wait, I don't, I can't see the blue one because of the, the way I have my screen. But anyway, um, I did the blue one based on an image I had seen um, on the internet. I didn't know what it was, you know, it was not an identifiable bird. And then when I finished it, I decided to just do the same thing um, a couple of more times and, you know, change the background because I'm very interested in backgrounds these days. And, you know, when I do birds very often, it's not in a natural setting, but I kind of change the setting to something, you know, decorative, surreal or whatever. Um, and so this came out as a series, which is one of the few I've actually done that I would call a series. And, um, it was just a lot of fun. I mean, they're, as far as I know, they're pure fantasy birds. You know, they, they are a lot of fun. They're a bit, a bit kooky too. I like them a lot. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And thank the you. colors match their personalities. I thought right. <laughs> with the colors. Right, right. Well, it all came from somewhere in here. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and the uh, Rosie Spoonbill is, you know, a more realistic image. Um, 
they're not in this area. I know they are down in Florida, but I've been intrigued with these birds for a long time because they have this amazing shape. And when they pull out their feathers or they fly, it's as if they have these huge capes on. So I'm looking forward to do some others with different shapes. When you do these, do you use um, uh, photographs uh, as your source material or you do it from... Um... I start with a photograph, but then it quickly deviates from that. You know, I think this one was more in a natural... He was in the water, but the background is sort of a pure fantasy background, which, you know, goes with him <laughs> color-wise and feeling-wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. I, I like yeah. them a lot. I've always your your animals especially are really whimsical. Thank um, you. Yes. Yeah. Um, all your work. I mean, it's you know, I'm I'm a big fan. Um, if you um, you know, have have a look at uh, some more of Marjorie's work. She's got um, uh, quite a bit on artsy. Um, yes. um, some landscapes, some um, figurative work, a bit of abstract, um, some surreal things. Um, so yeah, have have a look and come in and see these in person. They're they're I love the pink and the, the rose. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thanks Thank you, Marjorie. Me. Good to see you. Great show. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I have uh, two pieces by John Melville. John um, is a first of all, uh, he's a, a a fantastic artist and a really wonderful framer. Um, he's got two pieces in the show. This is called What's Your Number? Um, and then the second piece is called uh, Green Stamps. Um, each 